Don't you miss me just a little bit. Woo! Hey! I, um, I'm looking at this thing, this article, where a rapper talked about letting his wife have sex with Drake if he's able to have, um, I guess, a an association with him. I don't even know what the word is, right? But it, it's along the lines of... Hey, man, I'll let you fuck my wife if you can just get on the song and do a feature. Okay, whatever works. You know, that's the way he felt. And in that poll, it was interesting because that's a question that, for many people, it's like there's a price to pay. I remember the wrestler back in the day, Ted DiBiase. He always say, uh, everyone has a price. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm personally, I mean, it, it wouldn't be one of those things that I'd be... It'd be more if my partner really wanted to do it, me and my, my wife or my girl, whatever it is. She's like, if she wanted to really fuck Drake, like really, really fuck Drake, and that was like her hall pass, you know, like that. A lot of people have like that pass for their partner. Maybe you don't because you're too prude and you're too prideful. And, of course, monogamy is the world to you. But there's people out there that would be like, ah, you know, they've been together for 20, 30 years. This recipe's not going to change, <laughs> you know. I think that's the part that I marvel most about uh, the people that I was able to talk to and that were in unconventional relationships for those years that I was dating. It was so, it was the fascination for me was the level of confidence that they had. And people automatically go into, oh, their fucking brain is fucked up. They had trauma. But guess what? We all, we all have trauma. We all have trauma that we deal with. I mean, there's kids that are so privileged that are they're talking about their trauma and that's the reason they do drugs that's the reason why they do x y and z right i mean everyone deals with trauma but you're saying well not everyone could be like that i get it you're a prude fuck you know i remember hugh hefner talking about that just saying you know when you were removed the sex out of the equation like just uh the restrictions of it, 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 it it's fine because for a lot of people that's such a violation and i get it everyone has their valid reasons for being prude or being exclusive, whatever it is, where they want to enjoy, there's no right or wrong. I, I guess my point with with something like that is he he knows like hey, I mean if we're that good, I mean we as humans, I always go back to this, we're always fighting biology, not so much women, but I think men do, the bi- the biology of having to control those urges that have already been in there, right, and now you having to change your patterns and we have a consciousness so we're able to we're not fucking apes right we're just not running wild not able to talk or think so i understand the kind of argument to that but it's it's weird how we can't find common ground in any of that in any relationships like when you're with somebody let's say that likes to can really just fuck other people and be okay at home but he treats you good he takes care of the bills he gives you love and attention he gives you all these things to check off your list, but God forbid he goes to something else for somebody else that he doesn't care for. Right? And same thing with men. Men are like, you know, they don't, you know, especially in the experiences that I've had, it was more of women being neglected, not giving them the time of day. Like, if you're looking at a pie chart, their partner would be like four or five in the priority list. There would be their hobbies, their job, and maybe their kids, maybe their dog, and then the girl, you know? They just kind of wanted her to be just sad, you know, just doing the house, cleaning work, handle some of the bills, handle some of the shit I don't want to do. Basically delegating whatever shit you don't want to deal with, you give to the woman, and then you give her time when you want to. I got, it's it's weird, you know, and then a woman, of course, she's going to feel neglected and want to be with somebody else, feel loved and appreciated, and of course, there's a bunch of guys knocking, whether you go to the gas station. And that's the part that in every conversation that I have with women, I always go back to this. I always tell this to my partner, too, is that if you go right now at work and you know 10 guys, you could lure them into something of sexual activity that quickly. But I couldn't do the same if it was the other way around. The only time that a guy would be like, no, I don't want to do anything, if he's truly not attracted to you. 
Like, if he truly doesn't have the hots for you or he doesn't find you cute or anything, he's not going to do anything. But you tell the guy, hey, listen, I just want to go ahead and give you a blowjob and no one ever has to know about it. I'm going to leave town. I'll go to California next week. That guy's going to be like, oh, man, I don't know. I love my wife. But, you know, she's unzipping the pants ready to go. So that those are hard realities that women don't want to accept. And I get it because I have a daughter. And what I will tell her is simple. It's like, hey, if, if that's not part of your curriculum, you got to let it be known. And then you got to identify the type of men that are not like that. I can tell you what kind of men are not like that are, are the men that are mostly homebodies. The men that just really just want to go, they're antisocial, they're introverted, they don't like being around people, they just like coming home, you know, doing a job, not talking to people, going home, that no one is attracted to their Oxford shirts and and their creased khakis, you know, like it's, a, it's that guy they're not attracted to, like it, they're, they're not screaming sex appeal, so therefore, and they're not trying to do it either, so they're just trying to get the fuck out, you know, just just do the thing, have a girl home and take care of her. You got to find the boring guys, in my opinion. You got to find the guys that are easygoing, chill, beta attitude. What I mean by beta attitude, just the easygoing guy. Doesn't want to fucking argue. He doesn't want to control you. You know, he just has his three or four things he wants to do. And then at the end of the day, you know, just go ahead and, and, and let me be. You do whatever the fuck you want to do. Right. And I, I, I feel women just look for the wrong traits so many times. So many fucking times that I see this all the time that women just pick and, and men too. We pick the wrong partners. Like we pick based on sex. Great sex, great. But she's a she's a crazy, uh, jealous, clingy person. And, and I'm I'm not gonna deal with that, right? But the sex is off the charts. It's weird because, and I, I was talking to somebody about this that you whatever things we want to experience in a relationship, whatever the main criteria is. We're going to hang on tight if we're getting it, even though the other facets are not up to par. So let's just say the girl just wants uber attention, uber attention, wine and dine and romance. They'll deal with they'll deal with emotional abuse. They'll deal with cheating. They'll deal with all these other things, negative things that fuck up someone's psyche for a long time because they're getting the romance, because they're getting the the great sex because they're getting the great uh, verbal affirmation whatever it is that their love language is they're running an abundance of it but in the long term they realize that you know that ass kicking that I'm getting it's not worth the dick I'm getting it's not worth keeping them around every day to co-parent to go ahead and live together in the same household right and, and that's where that murky period that a lot of people get into when they are like for many many years you know they're in a miserable situation and they don't even know what the fuck to do they're like oh man i don't i, I don't know man I, I and next thing you know you talk to them like five years and they're like same thing oh man i i just don't know what's going on i i, I you know that they're they're not able to figure it out and it's like look you gotta you know these things uh, again going back to the people that are in non-conventional relationships they figured out that Having a companion and having that deep connection where they're respected, where they're being loved, where they're being appreciated, when there's a element of team, meaning we're working with each other in unison and showing love and showing affection, showing appreciation, it shouldn't be derailed by the lack of sexual incompatibility, right? Or the, I guess, not being on the same page or not feeling like you're the only one. For a lot of people, it's that pride, it's that ego, and and again, everyone's different. So I'm not here to. I, I guess for me, I've always, for a long time, always felt that it's you can't. Um, if you have an urge, go ahead and scratch it. If, if if you have a connection, go ahead and scratch it. That's me though, you know. But not everyone acts on it. See, that's the difference between me and other people. Is that people see the urge or have the urge but they're able to control themselves because they have a deeper constitution within themselves or or, or or a deeper core system where just they don't they're not allowing themselves to enjoy that but whatever the reasons are you know like i know somebody that is in a relationship and their their woman really loves like the idea of of kind of doing threesomes with another girl and but they just can't get over that because of their image because 
they have such a conservative image and god forbid someone found out that she was hanging out with girls and and doing threesomes or having something uh, of a relationship with somebody else that it would hinder and and i remember having these conversations and saying to people whatever you do in your sex life is what you do it's not for the world to know that's why like with gay people when they come out god bless you no problem with that but I don't think the world cares whether you're gay or not. It's like, can you get your job done or not, right? Um, people really get insensitive about it. It doesn't bother me. I mean, you can rock the flag all day. You can do what you got to do. It doesn't bother me at all. It's like, hey, as long as you respect my space, I'm good. I love you. I, I'm not. No problem. We can hang out. We can drink. You know, even though sometimes they think, okay, because you're nice to them, they think they can hit on you. <laughs> Oh my God! I remember how to coach, man. I, I ne- for for many fucking years. It's like, and and we were just, you know, I was comfortable. And I used to hear the rumors. I'm like, hey, I mean, yeah, he's not. I mean, I don't see anything. You know, I never saw him talking to girls, but he never he never really hit on me or anything like that. But he was, you know, he had a little reputation about him that I I was not aware of. And one day I went to meet him down in Miami, and we're like, he was like, hey, let's go out to the club. I'm like, okay, sure. You know, shooting the shit. Me being a dumbass, just go in. It's a gay club. I'm like, uh, I, I think he was just dropping the hint. He ended up doing something else to me, but that's another story for another day, right? And it was weird because it was like, you know, just me being comfy, me being open, and, and, and not even because I knew I was very extreme with homophobia. You know, I have been, I don't know what you want to call it, but when I had that experience at 10 or 11, I don't remember exactly when, but it was around 10, between 10 and 12 years old. Probably when I was in fifth or sixth grade, so it was like 10, 11, I guess, maybe. And you're, you're going to, to a guy's house, and he's luring you to his house because he has Nintendo. He has Mike Tyson's. I don't have video games at that time. You know, so the way I would play video games was to go over other people's houses and play. And and I would go ahead and, you know, get my fix. I'm like, shit, man, Mike Tyson's punch out. Let me go play. And the dude, so the dude would have me invite me over and be like, hey, uh, I got Mike Tyson's. Come over. And then, like, halfway through, he will be like, hey, man, let's, uh, let, let me show you my pee-pee. Hey, why don't you suck it? Why don't you do this? I'm like, ah, you know, I'm not doing any of that. You know, but he ended up, he said, look, I'll go ahead and let you play for a long time if you let me do this to you. I'm like, mm, you know, it happened. I'm like, ah, he forced. I was, I was forced. I'm like, ah, oh, damn, that sucked. You know, and I don't know what to think of it. But then what happened was I it, I was really angry and festered in. And I said, um, I definitely said, okay. I remember one time seeing him in the bus stop. I beat the shit, the living shit out of him. I I, I beat the shit, living shit out. He never fought back. I think he knew what he did. And it was one of those things that from that point, I was very, very homophobic because of that experience. But then as you get older and you go to college and you kind of meet people and you kind of open up and you're like, okay, you're not really like that. Like that's not, that That was just one incident. That was uh, an exception to, to you know, the, the, the many good people that are out there. Right, so just being assaulted in that way, it's like, eh, you know, it's no big deal, but it is what it is. I mean, people go through worse, right? But it, it's like, my, my whole point is that when you know, I derailed it by the way, it was like supposed to be fucking funny. Um, <laughs> but it was, it was like, my, my point is that everyone has their own flavors, everyone has their own likes and dislikes, and I'm always supportive of that. I really have been, I, I, and it's a beautiful thing about you living whatever it is your life is, you know. and but I always marvel at that, you know. When I was talking to the to the married women, that I I would go meet the husbands, or their husband would have me come over, and we'll all have a get together. And the moment he leave, he was like he grin lit the, the you know me getting a blowjob or whatever. You know, he's like a married guy that they've been together for 15, 20 years. He's like, ah, you know, no big deal. I mean, we're not going anywhere. We have kids. We have a family. We're not, you know. I just I'm open to it. And other people just view that in a negative light because of why would you share your partner? I mean, again. Whatever makes them happy makes them happy, or if they're not happy, heck, they're trying to figure it out, right? And and, and I, I just think that overblowing sex or whatever it is, you know, whatever I've realized that many people have different thresholds, and people in their own way are not able to look past a certain point. And I think that, but the sad thing about it is that even with that person's limitations. And then they run into somebody that is very evident that they're out there enjoying the world. So, for example, like you're attracted to a guy that's an NBA player. Uh, you know, guess what? Uh, he's probably not going to stop doing what he does. Like if you know that he has a reputation of being out in the clubs, if you know that he's out there going out and socializing, that's the red flag for me. Like when your partner 
is always out drinking with the boys and having a good time, like you're you're asking for that attention. Like you're asking to be out there. When they're making a beeline to the bar, they're they're just not making a beeline to just have a drink and go home. Ah, uh, that's that's one of those where they got the party in them, as I like to say. They got a little bit of a party in them, and you know it's on them. It's it's their and and I feel whenever you're in a relationship. And you talk about monogamy or open-minded or whatever hybrid situation you want to create. You have to just understand yourself and then understand your partner. And not necessarily with their words, but with their actions. Because God forbid, I've made mistakes too. Because, because of the reality that you know people are not comfortable talking about certain things. Or you've been shamed before to talk about certain things. Right? Like, I mean, gosh, if you want to talk about for me, it's a... Uh, porn one of those things like you know i like i enjoy watching amateurs like i, I like watching you know amateur couples doing their thing i, I think that's a that's fun that's cool right it's not scripted they have they're comfortable with each other they have fun and they're secure enough to show to the world i that's like whoa you know that's a lot of swag right there fuck a podcast that's next level right there you know shit you putting your dick out there and your tits and your body out there for the world to see neighbors to see and shit like you know we're, we're in love and and here it is <laughs> like I'm, I'm fucking getting it in, right? And I guess for me, when I, when I see shit like that, it's like, okay. And then you talk to people about it. Oh my god, porn is disgusting. Why do you want to watch that? That just, it, it, it just, it, it kills your self confidence. It, it's like, wow, like you really just can't enjoy it for what it is. Or, and I'm not saying that you know, that there's a, there's a top, there should be a threshold to it. Like if you're on it 24 seven nonstop and you're not able to control yourself, it's one thing, right? When but it's another thing, if, or if you have to have it on all the time. Yeah. Again, everyone, there's no right or wrong in my opinion. But when you try to base it on trauma and you try to base it on, okay, that person is a little raunchier than you or because they, they just had a fucked up history, maybe. But you got a fucked up history too that in other ways you're channeling those limitations because of your trauma. And, you know, just because you can't do it, that's okay. It doesn't make you less of a person. It just makes you different. And I, I would hope that with with people understanding the fluidity of sexuality and relationships and, and partnerships and all these different things that you would have people just accepting who the other person is. And let's just say that you're with a person that maybe later on you realize that you're not as compatible as you thought you were, but you really like everything else that's going on. Personally, for me, I'm the kind of guy, well, let's, let's, let's meet a halfway point. Let's find common ground. Let's find something that could work for both of us. Not fully, you know, not fully have it one way or the other, but in a way, do it where they are, um, you're, you're able to, um, you know, have some some respect for your partners and their ways, but yet still have a bone thrown at you once in a while. Maybe it's TMI. I don't fucking know. I'm just trying to ramp my way because I'm thinking if my ass is dead and my daughter is like 19, 20, trying to figure out her way through the world i'm like yo check this out man like just don't guys are fucking pigs you got to just figure out how they work you got to figure out how you work what you like what you're comfortable with find guys that, that that respect you that's the biggest thing respect you in that realm they respect you and you have to control the shots in the moment they don't respect you that's the way that you have to disconnect with that person you have to go ahead and call it a day because that person has already made a decision of how they're going to look at you and it's not in a good way so I hope you're able to, you know, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking to, but I <laughs> just ranting away.